Hi class, what we're going to look at now is the difference between an aldose, so you can see that down here, and a ketose. So these are general terms when we're looking at saccharides. Alright, so an aldose, it actually is pretty useful because it sounds like the functional group we're going to look for. So an aldose means that we have an aldehyde, so you can see it up here in red. So an aldehyde, if you remember from our organic section, is a carbonyl, so a carbon with a dull bond oxygen attached to a hydrogen. So aldehydes are always on the end of a chain. So up here in red, if our molecule has an aldehyde, we're going to say it's an aldose. If it has a ketone, so it looks really similar, the difference is it still has that carbonyl, but it's now sandwiched between two carbons, so it can never be on the end. It's got to be in the middle. So if we're trying to determine if something's an aldehyde, which will make it an aldose or a ketose, the most important thing is to look for the aldehyde, which will make it an aldose, or a ketone, which will make it a ketose. All right, so let me just point that out again. A ketone is sandwiched between two other carbons. So if we're looking here, we've got these groups right here. So the one in purple is sandwiched between two carbons. So that makes it a ketone. If you're an aldehyde, you'll have one carbon, but then more importantly, you have this other hydrogen. All right, so if the carbon at the base of the carbonyl is directly attached to a hydrogen, you're an aldehyde, making you an aldose. All right. Same thing on the other side. If you're a ketone, then you're a ketose. All right. And so those are two general classes that we're going to put these group, these uh, carboxylic acids, or, or sorry, not these carboxylic acids, these carbohydrates or these saccharides into. All right, so let me give you guys a chance to this. So let's look at these. So here we have four of them, or sorry, three of them. All right, so I want you guys to go ahead and try to solve for these. So pause the video and tell me if they're an aldose or a ketose. All right, so let's look at them together. The first thing we want to look at is what group's on here. So just like on the previous page, we have this aldehyde highlighted up on top. Here in the middle, we have a ketone and then an aldehyde on this side. So the first one is going to be an aldose. So let's just write that up here. A ketose. And another aldose. Okay. All right, so pretty straightforward, right? If we know what to look for, it's not too bad. Now, we're going to go one step further. And not only are we going to say whether there's an aldehyde or a ketone, we're also going to talk about What's the length of the carbon chain? So if you guys remember when we were naming organic molecules, we had terms that told us, you know, is there one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Remember our IUPAC namings? So similar idea. So if you look here on the left, we've actually already counted them. So starting with this carbon at the base of the carbonyl. So when we're looking at this, if we have six carbons, for this naming, we're actually going to be a hexose. So if we're going to put the name together, it'll be aldo hexose. And the reason this is important is now what we're going to see is the aldose part comes from this, right? It's telling us that we have an aldehyde. And the hexose part is telling us the number of carbons we have. Okay. So we can now get a lot of information about the molecule just by its name. Aldohexose means that it has an aldehyde and it's six carbons long. All right, pause the video, try the other two, and tell me if you can put the entire name together. So just like we did aldohexose, tell me what the next two would be. All right, class, when you're looking at this, I think we already did the first part, right? We found that it was a ketose, and we found the other one was an aldose. Now the other thing we want to do, and I think we did this when we did the IUPAC naming, is it's really important to number them. Because if we number them, we don't worry about missing a carbon. It's really easy to do, especially on an exam, you kind of get rushed. All right, so we have three carbons. So it's still a ketose. And now it's going to be a keto. And if you remember, three is triose. So keto. Triose. Uh, and so the triose, this is going to specifically tell us 
that we had three carbons. The keto group is going to tell us that we had a keto. All right, the last one, we'll number them as well. One, two, three, four. So it's still an aldo. And then now, because we have four carbons, we're going to be, if anyone remembers, four is tetros. So it'll be an aldo tetros. And so this is how we can name these molecules. So if you're just very systematic, you'll be in good shape, right? So find the functional group. Aldehyde is aldose. Ketone is ketose. And then you do need to memorize those numbers. So three, three through six. Right? So the triose is three, tetrose is four, pentose is five, and six is hexose. And so it's just uh, right near the video on the, the iBook. All right, I hope this helped, class.